Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our next edition of the Intrinsic Education podcast about positive education. We talk all things positive ed, positive psychology, and uh, this week is going to be something slightly different. Um, I've had over the last couple of weeks a few people hounding me, including this man who's going to be talking to us today about why don't I get someone to talk to me about what I do in positive education and positive psychology circles. And after much, uh, much nagging, uh, both ways I think it was, Robbie Koenig has agreed to come on and chat to me about this topic. You'll know him, many of you will know him from, uh, from tennis circles. He was a uh, 13 years, Robbie, if I'm correct, on the pro circuit as a player, represented South Africa in Davis Cup, um, and is now a commentator on the tour, and you will have heard his voice, no doubt. He is obviously, you know, I suppose not traveling at the moment, Robbie, but follows the tour around and is, um, yeah, the voice of tennis, I think. So, Robbie, wonderful to have you here. Oh, thanks, uh, Craig. Of course, we go back a long way and uh, we share a lot of uh, common themes, not only in sport, but certainly in psychology. And that's why I've been fascinated following you over the last couple of, well, it's about 18 months now, two years that you've been involved in positive psychology, positive education. So I want to jump in straight away. Um, and this because I've got a lot of questions I want to ask Brilliant. you as well. Obviously, I understand the importance of psychology and sport, but it's so fascinating to me that this has now come over into the education sphere. And my first question to you is surely this is something that should be the norm within school education, within high school education. Why isn't that the case, Craig? Rob, that's an excellent question, and I think it is the I think it is the case. If you speak to any teacher, they'll say, "Yeah, this is what we do." But of course, if you take a step back and 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 reflect on it, it probably isn't in the practice. And I think the answer is goes back to what education has always been like. You know, mm -hmm. education has always been about correcting things that were wrong. About you know, because we look at we look at content and people. You know, you you write an essay. And the teacher's job is to look at that essay and find where the gaps are and fix that. So we've, we've always come from a kind of deficit approach. Um, and how do, we, how do we then fix what the child, how do we get the child to go from a 60% to a 70%? Well, that's about fixing problems rather than taking a, a kind of strengths-based approach. And, and that's where, you know, that's where we are trying to now move positive education, positive psychology, just to give you a bit of a background and those folk who have listened to these podcasts in the past will have heard this. Positive psychology was founded by Martin Seligman and as a, as a movement, still fairly new in terms of, in terms of psychology, but um, you know, psychology has always been about fixing people, finding what's wrong, a deficit approach and kind of then trying to get them, fix them to be better. And, and that is exactly what's happening in education. I, Pos Ed has moved, it's kind of come on slightly later. Uh, you know, sports psychology is always, to be fair, sports psychology in many ways has been about a deficit approach as well. You know, trying to correct negative self-talk, trying to get people to yes. be better rather than identifying strengths. But certainly positive education as a movement now is trying to get teachers to operate from a strengths-based approach, finding a child's strength, enhancing that. Yes, of course, we still, you know, it's not, it's not magic. It's not about just adjust that, that you still need to correct folk and you still need to find, you know, there's, there's always going to be positives and negatives, but it's about finding that balance and trying to shift it more towards the, the positive side of things. Mm -hmm. I tell you, one of the things that really struck me when listening to some of the webinars um, that you were hosting was you made the point about relationship first, education second. And that really struck a chord with me because so often when you, you as a coach dealing with players at the high end of sport, it does become so much about teaching them how to play the game because they generally know what they're doing. But it's that relationship, knowing how to get the best out of that person that you're working with. So tell me how positive psychology, intrinsic education does that for the pupil in the classroom. Yeah. Robbie, the, the idea really is to try and unlock in teachers this, this understanding of the role of connection 
it, it, it is, you know, if you go through the, if you go through the, the positive psychology literature, if you listen to the, the, the thought leaders around the world in this space, they will always have connection as one of the, you know, there's, there's two things that are really important. You know, they'll say that and then the, but one of them will always be connection. There's so much yeah. that, that comes out of it. We always talk about how social connection is, positive emotions is obviously really important. That's one of the, the key aspects in my PERMA model that, well, not mine, it's Martin Seligman's PERMA model, but the one that, I, that I've been presenting in the webinars recently, positive emotion is, is really important. We want to try and build people's positive emotion, especially in this time now. But actually, mm -hmm. the way you can supercharge emotions is positive emotions is when you are sharing them with people. So there's a connection. And when that connection's there, then that, you, know, you, you multiply the, the actual positive emotional side of things. So the connection is critical. The, the, there's so much work in the, in the physiological kind of space as well. This kind of mind-body connection. What, is, what, is the, what are the benefits of positive emotion physiologically? So for me, if you are creating, if you are connecting deeply with a person, they feel safe, they feel cared for, they feel important. And once you start doing that, if you make that physical connection, it brings them out of their insecurities, out of their kind of limbic brain into their prefrontal cortex where they can be more creative, be more open to learning, all of those, those, those aspects. So, so social connection is critical and at a personal level, in a community level. And I think we've all noticed it now in this lockdown, haven't we, where we've, we've kind of had a bit of a desert of, of social connection and we've realized how important it is to us as, as, as human beings. So part of the, one of the things we're trying to do at schools is really get back into the building, understand where students are now, where, they, where, where teachers are now in the state of being anxious, being stressed, and teaching them tools, one of which is social connection, to then unlock themselves, get themselves feeling safe and more secure out of this anxious state. And once you are out of that anxious state, you, you become more open to learning and, and you can do a lot more. Fascinating. Um, and again, I see a lot of connections with sport in, in that department. And one of the other things that came up that also fascinated me, and it's fascinated me for a long time, is, is sleep and nutrition in education. Now, one of the, the first books that I ever read on, on nutrition way back when um, was a book called, man, uh, the name escapes me now for a second. It's called in fact, he traveled with Martina Navratilova for a while, and he was Martina's personal nutritionist. And, and I read the book, and I couldn't believe it. I read it when I was injured, and I couldn't believe the difference it made to me, the feeling that I had. Um, and it was a game changer for me. And I've got a wife who is big into functional medicine and, and eating well and always on the kid's case about getting enough sleep. Tell me how this fits into your, your positive education mantra. Yeah. But a critical, critical element, Robbie. The the PERMA model that I was talking about earlier is is positive emotions, engagement, relationships, meaning, achievement, accomplishment, and the latest version of that has added a health kind of vitality piece to it. And the reason that's been added is because, as you say, it's critical. You know, we we've mm -hmm. we've known. We've known, you know, you can ask anyone and they'll know, eat well and you are in a better space physically. And if you're in a better yeah. space physically, then you're in a better space mentally. But sometimes that, you know, it's not, we, we probably don't practice it as, as religiously as we should. And that's where it's now been an explicit, added explicitly to this positive, this model of flourishing. And that's the word, that's the word we use is that this is a model of flourishing because we don't want to just survive. We, positive, yeah. positive psychology is about, is about flourishing and eating well is about flourishing and having positive emotions, which are the nutrients, the cognitive nutrients, the same as eating well is are, are nutrients for your, you know, physiologically for your body. So for me, at functional medicine is, is, a, is, is so, so important. And the, the nutrition aspect, the, the sleep part of it, we don't 
I don't think we educate our young people enough about how important this is. It's becoming even more critical now with the type of food that's available to, to young people. Well, I say young people, all of us. You know, so I mean, you're in the fridge 24 seven, just about. Yeah, well, now we are, yes. Yeah, I mean, it's, the, it's the shortest, it's the, you know, the shortest uh, trip we can do now is to our fridge. But, but of course, you know, going back to the, the, the nutrition thing, because our kids, it's so easy for them to not eat badly, not get nutritional food. And because it is so easy for them to be on their smartphones and not necessarily understand that having that blue light just before sleep is going to impact the, the nature of your sleep, we actually need to now more than ever be explicitly educating our, our, ourselves, ourselves. I'm guilty of it. I'm on my social media way too much. So we need to educate ourselves about these things as well as our children. So hence, critical, critical pillar of positive education is that vitality piece, which of course includes wanna... exercise. Yes, absolutely. Um, is, um, one of the things as well uh, that I wanted to ask you as a parent, so I'm looking at different schools, say for my kids to go to, Yep. And this school, let's say, has, has come on board and is is advocating positive education, intrinsic education. How does a school like that measure the success of this kind of idea? Yeah, that's a very good question, Robin, and it's not a short-term answer, unfortunately. And and what yeah. you would hope is that I think it's a philosophical one, first of all, but that a philosophical one that's grounded in good science. The you know, positive psychology as a field is not, is not pop psychology. It's not popular psychology. This is grounded in science. And I think if you are, if a school is genuinely using positive education as a, as a, as a, as a foundation to their approach, then the things we've been talking about now, you will see it in practice. You will see that the, the, the teachers are deliberate about, about connecting at a, at a relational level with the kids. You will see that they understand the nature of the vitality. They understand what engagement looks like. So the, the answer is, and I, I'm, gonna, I'm actually going to answer this in a different way. Too many schools at the moment bring the specialist in for a, staff training and they run a one-off training and that's supposed to be the silver bullet that you know so you see these fads if you speak to teachers they'll tell you oh my word another you know what's the next fad yeah positive education for coaches yes so but yeah but, and those are the guy fortune coming. yeah say that again rob so you pay the guy fortune come and hire him for a couple of weeks and the knowledge is supposed to be dispersed over the next two years. It doesn't exactly. work like that, does it? And it doesn't. And, and so exactly that analogy with, with positive education. Positive education is a philosophy that gets embedded over a long period of time. It's not a program. It's not a, it's not a, it's not a one thing. But if you went into a school that was doing this well, you would be able to identify the key, the key aspects that fit into this. And of course, because this is grounded in science, because there is, there's been so much work in the background done prior to this happening, we know it works. And so, so it's more that way around. It's more putting good science into practice because there's already yeah. proof that it works rather than, rather than saying, well, we're going to put this one, put, put in the silver bullet and we're going to see these miraculous changes in our students. So the, it's, about, it's about a commitment. It's about longevity. It's about philosophically being aligned. Because if you listen, yeah. I mean, who wouldn't want their child engaged or in a school where you know they are they cared for because of the because it's about relationships, that it's about engagement, it's about strengths, it's about finding their strengths. Because our, our kids are all different, aren't they? I mean, you know, you, yeah. you 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 know your kids, you know, all three of them totally different strengths. My three totally different strengths. And, yeah. you know, so we don't want them to go to a school where it's a one, you know, one size fits all. We want them to be seen for who they are. And, and that to be nurtured in them. Craig, I can't help when you say that to think, you know, in sports psychology, we often talk about 10 minutes a day is better than 70 minutes once a week. 
So I guess it's, it's all about creating that continuity over a long period of time that really will, you know, strengthen the neural pathways, not only in the teachers, but of course in the kids as well, once Absolutely. they understand the philosophy behind what, uh, you know, the head is trying to implement. Absolutely. That, that's spot on, Rob. You know, it's the idea is, is that it's, it's about, it's creating habits, isn't it? It's creating yeah. good, it's creating good habits, good, you know, strong neural pathways that are, that are going yeah. to serve you well. And if you, if you do it for 70 minutes once a term, or you have yeah. one period a day, you know, one period per week at a school that's dedicated to, you know, to thinking skills, well, actually, that's not going to work. It needs to be embedded into your, into your daily practice. You know, one of the things we talk about in terms of positive emotions is have, you know, having something like, you know, gratitude practice, you know, this gratitude yep. journaling. You know, once a day before you go to bed, just write down the three things you're most grateful for. It's practice. It's, yep. it's getting, and of course, you're planting that seed before you go to bed. So you, yep. you're putting yourself into a positive frame of mind, but it's habit forming. And of course, mm -hmm. the physiology of positive emotions means also that your body is then fl flooded with, with positive chemicals, you know, chemicals that are good for you and, and chemicals that are good for your health physiologically as well. So yes, definitely 10 minutes a day, better than 70 minutes once every now and again. So this actually segues quite nicely in, into what I wanted to ask you specifically. So, so what is your focus at the moment? Yeah. Um, what are you doing with your time um, going forward and, and where do you want to take um, this expertise that you have in the field? Good question. So obviously at the moment, Rob, with, with where everyone is with COVID-19, most of the work I'm doing at the moment is in well-being. So looking at supporting mm -hmm. schools to get their teachers to understand the state of mind that they're in that they are in a, in a heightened level of, of anxiety, that they're in a state of stress and how that then impacts kind of the fight flight response in their body and how that physiologically impacts them. So just that at the moment, that is where we're, we're working. We're doing a lot of work mm -hmm. with doing, we've been running lots of workshops with, with schools and with teachers in particular, with the idea that those skills are then transferable. Teachers can take those nice, easy, practical skills, into the classroom to enable their children to the children in the classroom to also understand anxiety to to unpack that and to have practical tools <clears throat> excuse me to have practical tools that they can implement for their own well-being the the most the, my long-term work is in is of is, is in building levels of of self-efficacy and hope and resilience. So that is the major thing is how, if we can get ourselves, you know, positive psychology is not just about the positive emotions. It's about understanding how our body and our brains oscillate between positive and negative emotions and how those, how, how we can use that, that oscillation from strength, you know, from positive to negative to create a genuine strength. So it's about mindset work, so I, you know, I call myself a thinking coach because the idea is to yeah. coach people to be, to think about these things, to reflect before they, you know, if they experience a negative emotion to kind of call it mind the gap is to be able to understand that negative emotion, reflect on it and then respond in a way that's going to suit them. You know, they can let it go or they can, you know, so to build that ability because that's where resilience comes from is, is that oscillation you cannot become resilient without having gone through negative things. So our long-term work is to look at how we can build resilience in young people uh, through hope. And I think especially now it's a critical skill, the ability to reflect, to be metacognitive about our thinking skills, metacognitive about our emotional thinking as well, which is critical. I, I'm a big fan of Stephen Peters's work around the, you know, mm -hmm. the, chimp, the chimp paradox. I think a fantastic book because it gets you to understand that, that limbic brain versus the prefrontal cortex and how the thinking differs. And if we can catch ourselves, reflect on it and make a decision, then we can build some real, some real capacity in ourselves as thinkers. Yeah. You know, one of my favorite quotes is, is life is 10% what happens to you, 90% how you respond to it. Uh, and it shows, you know, again, for me that 
I grew up in a tennis environment, a sporting environment. Uh, school for me was a, a mechanism to play sport. So I think of everything in a sporting situation, but it's amazing actually when you start to digest it, uh, so many similarities, isn't there? And if you want to be good at sport, we always talk about the importance of being tough mentally. You want to be good at education, you want to be good at life, you've got to be tough mentally. So I couldn't agree with you more. It's fantastic. It, you're, you're educating these teachers to make these kids mentally tougher. Yes. Is that what it's about in a nutshell? Was it a little bit more than I ever, ever made it too simplistic there, Craig? No, you haven't. I, I think there's a lot more that, to it than just the mental toughness. I think that is one of the skills we definitely want to develop in, 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 in kids. I think it's about competencies, of which mental toughness is a competency that is really critical. Okay. But I think there's, you know, at the moment we're actually working, there's a group of us who are working internationally uh, to, to look at a framework for teachers and saying, you know, there are lots of frameworks, there are lots of programs out there, but programs are yeah. not that easy to transfer cross-culturally. So what we're trying to do is look at a framework that we can build, that schools can take no matter where in the world they are and, and kind of lay that framework over their cultural situation. So, it's, yeah, it's about competencies of which mental toughness is, is a critical one. I mean, we all know, and that's that resilience. That's the resilience piece. So, there, you know, lots of, lots of, and, and you, you know, these kinds of things, you know, buffering stress, because that's what resilience does. It gives you your meaning, the meaning part of the PERMA. If we have meaning in our life, then we're able to push through. So we become more resilient. We can cope with our, the stresses more. So there's lots of these little competencies. So to kind of I always talk to teachers about having a kind of mental toolbox. And what we want to do is we want to give these kids this nice mental toolbox that they can dip in. Part of the skill of that is not just teaching the skills, but also teaching the, mm. the children what's the right skill to use at the right time. You know, when is the right time to actually engage in empathy and be compassionate, particularly to yourself versus yeah. when is the right time to say, come on, you need to get tougher and push on through. Yeah. So, so part of the skill is teaching them when to use each of these competencies that we're building. Mm -hmm. Fascinating. Um, any other areas that I haven't touched on that, that you think are, are so important in, in teaching headmasters and teachers uh, about the importance of this uh, intrinsic education or positive education, positive psychology that, that, that I haven't touched on? No, I think we've kind of covered most things, but one of the areas that I'm doing quite a bit of work on at the moment, and I know personally, at, at a personal level, this has made a really massive difference to my wellness and my flourishing, is one of the areas we're working on is this other-centeredness, is to get... Say that again. Other-centeredness. Other so, you know, rather than being self-centered, you know, when we are anxious, yeah. we spend a lot of time inside our own heads. When we are, yes. when we are worried, when we go into any negative emotion, we go, we go inside our own heads. So to create, to create this kind of other-centeredness where we are, we are thinking of those outside of us. And if you do that, you, and we do that by creating meaning, you know, those folk who are either very spiritually engaged or folk who are very engaged in charity work, their focus, mm -hmm. there's a lot of science out there saying that those folk who are other centered, focusing on our, something greater than themselves, whether it's people, whether it's spirituality, whatever it is, are, are physically, are, are, are actually flourish more. So one of the areas we're looking at is how do you build that in schools? How do you build that? And of course, it comes through empathy. Empathy. It comes through these random acts of kindness. Lots of schools that do great work in, in the outreach space. But what you're doing is so, but actually explicitly making a connection for the children that it's not about, it's not about, you know, it's, it's not about charity. It's not about giving. Yeah. So it's, it's about actually connecting with other people gaining from other people as much as they gain from you. So that's one of the real, really important areas that we're working on at the moment. Um, in particular, mm. you know, trying to get the, our, our, our independent schools and our X Model C schools to kind of understand the, the, those aspects. And I can relate to that in a big way. Uh, the joy that you get from giving other people information or 
helping a kid on the tennis court work on his forehand and then seeing the fruits of that labor down the road. You're yeah. so right. It, it gives you an incredible sense of self-worth, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. And exactly. yeah, I think in a, you know, in a society these days where these kids are growing up so self, self-absorbed with social media, um, stuff like this is becoming more and more, uh, I guess, important Absolutely in, in right. the upbringing yeah. of the kids, isn't it? Yeah. You, you know, that's, that's exactly it. You know, if you think about social media now, everything is about what do I look like? You know, I post something on, on Twitter. I post something on social media. It's, it's this kind of personal brand building. And, and you, know, I would, you know, I don't think that's a bad thing, but it's understanding that there is a real risk with that, that you become very, very self-centered because you're not mm-hmm. out there. So how do, you, how, do we, how do we develop, how do we build a counterbalance to that in our, in our young people? I think that's a really important thing that schools need to grapple with now more than ever. And I genuinely believe that, because you're 100% right, when you are giving, when you're out there, you know, doing stuff for other people, you genuinely feel so much better about it. So yeah. if we can get young people to realize that they feel so much better there, hopefully it'll, the positive effect will be they spend less time on, you know, on their technology. And, and I'm, I'm, a, I'm a fan of technology. Social media, sure. great. But it's about the balance and understanding the impacts of each of those on, on them, which is critical. Mm, I hear you loud and clear. Now, before we came on here, we were discussing something um, that I've just called the CPE and something that you wanted to start here in South Africa. I think you called it the Center for Positive Education. Tell me a little bit more about that. Rob, really exciting times. Uh, We are going to be launching, we are right now in the process of launching the Center for Positive Education. We want to create a a space where teachers can, that teachers can use as, as a place for professional development. The idea is to create a resource library to connect with centers of positive education from around the world. There's so much great work out there in this area. And the Center for Positive Education in South Africa is going to be a place where, where, positive, where, where teachers who are interested in this can connect with other teachers. We're going to have professional development opportunities available. We're going to be... So really, we want, we want to use the center as a place a virtual space. Yes, there's going to be a physical space as well, but a virtual space where teachers from throughout throughout the world, actually, but certainly fo- our focus is on South Africa, where we can grow the understanding of what you and I have been talking about today. You know, if teachers are listening to this and they're interested in this kind of stuff, they can come on, they can do some short courses, they can connect with other like-minded people, a collaborative place where people can share ideas around positive education and positive psychology. We're going to have some guest lecturers who come on some, some really wonderful people who are at the forefront of this internationally. So we're very excited to be out there growing this and giving, just growing positive education and positive psychology as a, as, as a, as a foundation of good education and, and, and well-being and flourishing in our schools. Well, man, that's fantastic. I mean, you, you've known me for a long time a long long time and i'm all about that i'm, I'm a exactly. very enthusiastic yep. person naturally i think it is certainly the way forward especially in an environment these days where, where things can be quite negative mainstream media we see a lot of negativity we've been going through it at the moment now so i think the work you're doing is going to be so instrumental in educating those people who are going to be looking after the next generation of people Absolutely. but good luck with that all and any other um projects on the horizon cc Oh, at the moment, just trying to help schools. I think being out there offering offering this workshop at the moment is our focus to try and get while schools are coming back, while kids are coming back after after the lockdown. So certainly for the moment, uh, the launch of the center is going to be happening soon. And obviously, folk can connect uh, on our website or follow the you know they can see that I'll put the link below the below this podcast so people can see where the where that is. And yeah, it's just about at the moment, kind of helping schools make sure that they are in a good space when they when they return. Exciting times. Uh, it's different. I don't think we thought we'd be here. Uh, I know Robbie, you sitting at home when you should, you know, be overseas doing some tennis commentary, and and don't think we ever 
thought of the fact that where we would be now, but I think even more so now than ever, it highlights how important this stuff is. So yeah, yeah, yeah exciting times. And, and, and thank you so much for taking the time. And Rob, you, you and I, I was, I was trying to work it out. I think it's been about 25 years since, um, since I taught you how to fly fish and, and now you teach me when, whenever we go. But uh, it's been a wonderful journey. And, and that's why I thought you would be the best person to share this podcast today because I know this is how your mind works as well. So thank you so much for the time. It's so appreciated. Well, I always enjoy our chats, Craig, and I certainly enjoy this one. And um, it's been highly informative for me. And I, I certainly hope it will be for your clients down the line and, and everybody else who connects with you because uh, from day one, uh, the connection was there simply because of the personality you are. So for me, it's not surprising that you've got into this specialized area of education. And certainly it sounds like cutting, cutting edge education. So, so all the best with it, my friend. Thanks, Robbie. Excellent. So folks, thank you so much for joining us and please do go on to our podcast, uh, the links there, please do follow us. And also if you go onto YouTube, go onto Craig Carolyn, my channel and follow us there as well. Every bit of support is greatly appreciated. Also means that you'll be the first to hear on all the exciting things that are happening at Intrinsic Education and the Center for Positive Education. Thanks everyone.